we are going to look at a new measure of angles. Now, in your training, what you've done up to now, when you've looked at angles, it's always been in degrees. Now, we're very comfortable with degrees. We're used to degrees. But we need to take a step back and see where does these degrees come from. Now, if we look at a full circle, 360 degrees, if you think of a right angle, we know that is 90 degrees, a straight line, 180 degrees. We're very comfortable with those measures. But now, where do they come from? Now, if you look back in, at the Babylonians, the Egyptians, they love the number 60. A lot of things are measured in 60s. If you look at a clock, there's a lot of versions of 60 on a clock. And then 360 degrees in a full circle. If you look at the Earth traveling around the Sun, if we look at how long it takes the Earth to go around the Sun, that's a full year. And that's about 360. It's not exactly. It's 365 and a quarter. But if you think of the number 360, it relates to how long it takes the Earth to travel around the sun. But it's not exact. Now, this 360 degrees in a full circle or 90 degrees in a right angle and so on, it's not a mathematical number. It's just a unit of measure. Like if you think of kilometers and yards are two different measures of distance. They're not versions of each other, but they're two different ways to measure. Now, 360 degrees in a full circle, degrees in an angle is a unit of measure. But that number was simply allocated. If you think of distance, the size of a foot, you can imagine where that came from. So that sort of thing. So it was just a distance that was decided on. Now, Degrees is just a 360 was a number that was decided on. It's not a mathematically determined number. Now, there's no problem with measuring angles and degrees. But do remember, it's not going to work out all the time. As soon as we start doing calculus and trigonometric functions, then degrees are going to cause trouble. So we need a new measure of angles. Now, we're not throwing degrees away totally, but we're introducing a new measure of angles called radian measure. Now, that is defined mathematically. We're saying if I've got an angle, we can draw it on the Cartesian plane, and a circle with radius r. We'll talk about that radius shortly. But for that angle theta, I am defining its size as a ratio. I take the arc length, s, divided by the radius of that circle. And that number is my size of my angle. Now, keep in mind, it's a number, so it doesn't have a unit. It's a ratio. It does not have a unit. We just sometimes say radians if I want to make sure that we don't get confuse it with degrees. But that angle size is then the arc length divided by the radius. Now, you might say, well, how big is the circle? Now, the beauty of circles is if I have another circle, the same angle theta, and you can experiment with this. Draw a couple of angles with different size circles. If I measure the arc length, I divide it by the measure of the radius. That number, that division, that ratio will always be the same. So it doesn't matter how big the circle is. So let's look at a unit circle, meaning a circle with radius 1. If I look at a full circle, let's say my angle is 360 degrees. So we start with 360 degrees. What would that be in radians? Now, it's the arc length divided by the radius. Now, we know the radius is 1. But what is the arc length? Well, that is the circumference of the circle. What's the circumference of the circle? Is 2 pi r. Here, the radius is 1. So it's 2 pi times 1 divided by 1. So that's just 2 pi. So as you can see from this formula, any size circle with radius, I can use r as a radius. 360 degrees is then going to be 2 pi. Now, we like having pi in there and not looking at the decimal number because that decimal number is an irrational number. We always have to round it off. It's ugly. So this is a nice number, but there's no unit for this. This is just the size of 360 degrees. So if you think of 360 degrees being 2 pi, it makes sense then that 180 degrees is pi radians. Now, radians isn't the unit. I'm just saying it so that you can relate it to the new measure of angles. So this is the simplest version we're going to use to convert between radians and degrees. 
Now, we still knew with radians, so we're going to look between radians and degrees for a while. But you have to get to a point where you're comfortable working with radians on their own without thinking in terms of degrees. But that comes with a lot of work. All right. So if I have to convert between radians and degrees, I've got the standard that 180 degrees is pi. So what would 40 degrees be? Now this comes back to ratios and proportions. To get 40 degrees, to change it to radians, I've got degrees, I want radians, I'm going to multiply it by pi over 180. Now if you're wondering why, where it comes from, if you look at ratios, if I say 180 goes to pi, 40 goes to what, then that then I've got the ratio 180 over pi is equal to 40 over x, and x is 40 times pi over 180. But if you've worked with ratios a lot, you don't have to write this out all the time. And there's also different ways to make the fractions when we look at ratios. This is just one. But easy enough, you multiply with what you want. So I want the radian measure, so the pi goes on top, and you divide by what you have. I've got degrees, I'm dividing by degrees. So if you look at that on your calculator, you will get 2 pi over 9. Now, I'm going to say this a number of times. Do not give the ugly decimal version. 2 pi over 9 is pretty. That is the exact value of 40 degrees. We leave it like that. 330 degrees to change to radians. I multiply it by pi over 180. And that will give you 11 pi over 6. Minus 150 degrees. Same process. And you can check on your calculator, that'll give you a negative 5 pi over 6. So, notice positive angles stay positive, degrees and radians, negative angles stay negative. And if we can represent it as a ratio with pi, it's very nice. We like that. But we can't always do that. It's not always possible, but we'll look at examples like that shortly. So let's look at the other way around, converting from radians to degrees. Now you can see there's no unit here, but I'm telling you we're converting. So we're assuming 3 pi over 4 is an angle. Now if you look at those three angles there, the first one is 3 pi over 4. The second one is minus 7 pi over 2. The third one is just the number 2.5. That's all it is. I wrote radians in brackets so that you know that this is an angle, 2.5, but it doesn't have a unit. So what this means is the pi has already been multiplied in there. Now, all three of these you can write as decimals, but the first two will be decimals that are irrational numbers. They keep carrying on and they don't repeat themselves. There's no pattern. Where 2.5 is a nice number, so we don't worry about that one so much. But if I have to convert radians to degrees, I now multiply with 180 degrees over pi. And you can use your calculator for that, and you'll get 135 degrees. The next one, multiply by 180 degrees over pi. You'll get a negative angle. It'll be minus 630 degrees. Now, the last one is 2.5. I still do the same. Multiply by 180 over pi. We don't all of a sudden squash a pi onto there or change the value or multiply this with pi. No, it's 2.5. That's the ratio. So if I multiply it with 180 degrees over pi, then I'm going to get something that I probably have to round off. So if I round it off to two decimals, I get 143.24 degrees. So there are some angles in degrees that do not make pretty radian measure. But it's radian measure nonetheless, so you must be able to convert. All right, now you're going to do a lot of conversions, and everything you've did with degrees, you have to be able to do with radians. Here's some standard ones that you have to get used to. You can pause, read through them. You need to get to know them. But if we look on the Cartesian plane, 90 degrees is pi over 2. 180 degrees is pi. 270 degrees is 3 pi over 2. And then a full 360 degrees is 2 pi. And you're going to have to get used to thinking in terms of radians. Now, 30 degrees is pi over 6, 45 pi over 4, 60 pi over 3. And there's a whole list there. Go do the conversions. Make sure you're happy with it. But you need to be able to practice these and work with them a lot. In our next video, we're going to look at using radians measure in some trig calculations and graphs that you have used before.